So me and Gab have been creating some Spotify playlists of music from different decades with the help of my patrons as well. We've got a series coming up, which we think you're gonna love. So make sure you subscribe and uh, keep your eyes peeled. But yeah, music from different decades has been um, on shuffle and repeat throughout the house. And it got me thinking back to when I was um, practicing, learning my early teens, some of the special moments that I had as a student of the guitar. Um, in particular, I remember learning a couple of solos that like at the time I felt, I felt were like ridiculously complicated. And um, I remember mastering them and I felt really good about mastering them. And looking back, I feel like those little stepping stones or markers, however you want to label them, they're really important and they do um, level up your playing and the skills that you learn when you master so like that and you, you're really buzzed to show people what you've, what you've been practicing, what you've been playing. Um, those skills go with you into the next thing that you learn or the next thing that you write. Um, so today we're going to be looking at one of the first solos that I mastered that I was super proud of. Um, it's the first solo from Sweet Home Alabama by Leonard Skinner. So for those of you that want to know about tone, well, I'm on my Fractal FM9 here, and I'm on the Brit 800 preset, so Marshall JCM800. Um, I went on to the number 34 um, scene, and I am just running a compressor and a reverb uh, in the amp, and I've got this kind of sound. I'm on my second position on my Strat, so I call position two like bridge two, right? <laughs> Very cool tone. Um, but yeah, I wanted to walk you through how I play this solo because it's it's tricky. And over the years, even though I thought I'd mastered it when I was younger, I hadn't I got it wrong. Um, and I think I've got it bob on right now. So I'm going to talk you through it. Super snappy lesson for you today. You'll be able to, ma if this isn't done by Sunday, right? Detention, my office, Monday morning. All of you. It's a big office, right? But I expect to see none of you there. First part goes like this. So we're going to start with an enormous bend on the 15th fret of the high E. Up, whole tone, and then just kind of let it fall away. Like the Dolby helicopter from the old cinema trailers. One thing that people miss here, a little hammer on from the 12th fret to the 15. Then you're gonna hit this F sharp down to the D. Hit it once and then the D twice. Now you can play this next bit, kind of in this area, but I feel like for everything that comes after it, it's better to position change here, okay? So we're gonna come down um, to the eighth and the 10th frets of the B string, and this is how the next part goes. By the way, throughout all of this, we've kind of got that Page Perry push that we've talked about before, triple P delivery. Um, if you give it that kind of tiny swing, Gonna make it sound better. So this phrase, 10th fret of the B to 8th fret of the high E, and then slide down a semitone from the 11 on the B back to the 10 and pull off to the 8. You could pick that whole thing, but I like the little pull off there. And then we're gonna go back to that 10 and then 9 on the G. That 9 on the G I think is just super quiet, maybe even a little bit palm muted the first time. back to the eighth fret of the B string. Mm -hmm. 
then you're going to hammer on from the eighth fret of the B to the tenth fret and then down to that nine on the G. This time it can be a little bit louder with your middle finger. Take that tenth fret of the B and bend it up, whole step. As best you can there, try and keep the fingers like rocking from note to note so that you've got separation and not too much bleed. If you listen to this solo, it all sounds like super clear. Not like... You don't want that, you want... Separation, clarity. Next part of the solo. So we're going to come down to the 7th fret of the G, slide up to the 9, and then here I want you to be super staccato with um, all of your notes. You can do that by releasing the finger pressure here, but you can also um, retouch the string with the pick once you've picked it, just before you pick the next note. Wow, that was like one of those tongue twisters, wasn't it? So if I'm light with my fingers here, and also... bringing that pick back in to pick the next note, um, I get super staccato. So once you've slid up, eight, 10, eight, and then that final 10, give it a cheeky bend again. Come back to the seven on the G, sustain it this time. And then chromatically, eight, nine, little slide. And then we kind of add this little triangle. which is eight, 10 on the B, down to the nine on the G with the middle finger, and then back to the eight on the B. To finish, got this very cool lick. This is definitely one of the uh, parts that I played wrong. I'm not even gonna show you what I was doing, but. I think this is the best way to play it. We're gonna open with semitone bend up and down uh, from the 10th fret of the B. You wanna hear the note, then up, then down. So it's like three notes, but a bend. Come back to that eight on the B. And then we've got this cool little slide back and forth. So that's nine on the G down to the seven and back to the nine then back to the eight. After you've hit that eight on the B, I want you to come down to the nine on the G and then kind of muscle that out of the way and put your index finger on the nine on the D and then hammer onto the 10 and pull off back to the nine. So you get this. Finish with 10 on the uh, A string, the note G. Now this is where a lot of people might hit this D, finish or this D. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the open D gives us that um, bite that you'll hear on the track without a kind of stupid um, position change. So from here, once we've hit that D, we're gonna wait a second and then dip the bar, let it back up. Now in order to get clarity on that open D, you have to be really careful taking your middle finger off the A string and kind of do a little bit of dampening just before you pick it. It'd be very easy to do something like this by accident. I've kind of pulled off my um, middle finger on the A string there and I've got this fourth ringing out. We don't want that. All together slowly.
it's a killer solo and um, I still enjoy playing it now. Some solos will be fun forever. Some solos will be fun forever. I mean, all guitar solos are fun forever, but I mean, some just, I don't know. I'm talking out my ass basically, but I feel like some that are more playful than others, um, you kind of connect with them differently. The second solo in Sweet Home Alabama as well is a beast. If you'd be interested in going through that one note for note with me, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, quick little lesson for you today. And a little bit of a nostalgia trip. Maybe some of you are thinking back to the stuff that you used to play when you were in your teens. But yeah, if you want the tabs back in track to go with today's lesson, you know where to do you know where to do? You know where to do one to. Do one to me Patreon up there or there. Uh, link down below and you can have a chat with me and all the other people over there. You get the inside scoop on the series. That's coming up with Gab. Keep your ears and your eyes peeled. And uh, yeah, it's been emotional. Let me grab something. I'm just gonna grab this pick. Cause I'm going now. I'll catch you in the next one.